Hi again. Uh, this is the last one, I think. And uh, I just wanted to quickly go over the literature and sources that I used. Uh, first, we start with Kazakh and Russian authors. Uh, of the Russian and Kazakh, <coughs> I highlighted four, even there, though there are more of them, but I highlighted four of them as the most relevant. One of them is Kushkumbayev, Aybulat, uh, which I already mentioned, the Warcraft of Kazakhs in 17th, 18th centuries. So he describes the, you know, the five weapons system, the tactics, the origin of uh, warfare in, in hunting, and etc. It's a very useful book. Unfortunately, it's only available in Russian. Uh, but he's, a, uh, he's one of the experts. He's one of the authorities in Kazakhstan. Definitely, I read his book twice uh, with... First time I read it, like... Uh, maybe i don't know 15 10 years ago and then i reread it again in 10 years ago and it was still solid it stood its kind of test of time he didn't he avoided a lot of uh, common misconceptions and myths scientific myths good work yeah i i i, I respect him and highly recommend him my main source of course and he is our biggest guru on weaponology in Kazakhstan, all things weapon, armor, and etc. Uh, his name is Kaliola Ahmijan Samatulu. Uh, Kaliola Ahmijan Samatulu. Uh, he uh, used to live in Almaty, where I live, but now he moved to Astana. He is, uh, he is you know, a big name. Anyone who is involved in historical reconstruction, archery, and I mean involved seriously like I am, uh, would have his book. And I have it right here. Uh, the, he has two options or two versions of it, Russian and Kazakh. I own them both. It's beautiful, beautifully illustrated. Uh, richly illustrated he is like myself an artist a very good one a very thorough he studies uh he had access to uh, museum archives which i didn't get i had to you know use all kind of i have to like uh, jump through the hoops and use all kind of uh trickery to get this information he had direct access to uh, archives he spent years working there and you know uh, so his stuff is definitely one of the best he's widely recognized all over uh, our region the russians recognize him the central asians recognize him so he he's number one authority in his own field another one is um uh, bobrov leonid bobrov leonid uh, he also is a famous Russian researcher. Uh, I was very pleased. They usually write about uh, all kind of uh, nomads, Central Asian, no, uh, Eurasian nomads. And I was very pleased when they wrote a few uh, very valuable articles devoted specifically to Kazakhs. Because, uh, you know, if you were in my shoes, you would know that Nobody ever writes anything about Kazakhs as they never existed, never had anything, you know, just huge territory. And uh, by the way, today Kazakhstan is the ninth biggest country in the world in terms of territory. So, uh, you know, within the 10 biggest countries in the world. And that territory was, uh, you know, uh, conquered and held by Kazakhs. So, you know, it kind of tells you something. Uh, what kind of nation would have the ninth biggest country in the world, but never gets any mentioning anywhere? But they do, and very grateful for that. Uh, and because their 
their so um, their authority is so undisputed uh, it, it's a it's just a great great resource for me to have also um, other authors are Hudyakov, uh, Garelik, and Solovyov. They also write a lot about uh, Kazakhs or neighboring Turko-Mongol uh, nomads. Also, a lot of useful information uh, I took from them. And those are my uh, main Russian and Kazakh language sources. Now, uh, the rest of them, and uh, interestingly enough, I actually started studying uh, horsebows in English language and then uh, went back to my native Kazakh and uh, Russian. So I was at, at the beginning I was more much more proficient in English language literature. So um, one of the best sources is Adam Karpovich. I already mentioned him. Uh, he wrote an amazingly good book called The Ottoman Turkish Bow. He is a Canadian citizen of Polish ancestry and uh, he just studied everything about bow making structure. He went in such a nitty gritty details and he studied glues and he studied woods and he performed uh, all kind of tests <clears throat> on uh, both performances and etc. It's just fascinating stuff. When I was reading him, you know, I was drooling all over the pages because I wanted to make bows immediately when I read his book. He's that good. Another source is uh, Thomas Duvernay. I, I already mentioned him. He wrote a book called The Korean Traditional Archery and he made a DVD film on it. He had a website. Uh, he's an American scientist, scientist, uh, but he worked in South Korea and he's done a great deal in introducing Korean archery and uh, making uh, of bow making to the world. So he's also one of my main sources because. Um, Korean archery is just so similar in many ways. I mean, it's probably the second closest one uh, after Turkish. Turkish would be the closest one. Korean would be the next one. Uh, of course, when we're talking about lesser Kazakh horsebow, if we talk about large horsebow, of course, it would be the Manchu, the Mongol, the modern Mongol, the Burats, the Halha bow, you know, uh, that kind of region. But uh, very similar. Korean bows. So that was a great source. Uh, also, I read Pip Bickerstaff's The Heritage of the Longbow. Uh, you know, remember those uh, in the beginning, in the intro, I mentioned how I made uh, uh, bows from wood branches. That's pretty much an idea of a uh, of a longbow in a, in a nutshell, a self bow made of just one piece of wood. But of course, back then I didn't know that you have to uh, use dried wood, you have to carve it specifically, and you don't use branches, you use lumber for that. But after I read this book, uh, I kind of learned about my mistakes of my childhood, and also it's great because. Uh, longbows are the best and quickest uh, introduction in, into uh, bow making. If you want to start bow making, I know there are some, you know, uh, very brave people who just dive right into horn bow making. I, I wasn't so brave. I went through uh, the longbow making stage first, and. I, I don't regret it because it, it's an amazing experience. Longbows is, are just, it's just such a beauty. And I highly recommend uh, this author. Uh, I also read Stephen Shelby's uh, The Archery Tradition of Asia. 
he writes a lot about it, uh, also very thorough author. Uh, he writes about Chinese archery and again uh, Chinese archery which is you know uh, Manchu archery very close to large uh, Kazakh horsebow so you know that's another source K Koper Dreyer's uh, he wrote the case thumbring book that was instrumental for me to understanding how the thumbring archery works uh, how it's you know what's the principles what are the principles of it uh, what's the um uh, what's the design what's the purpose how to use them so that was a great great source for me early on and uh, there are other lots of other authors that i kept adding these were my first books but then i read mike Lodes, uh peter decker David Gray, Scott, Radell, and, and many others. And, you know, I tried to list all of them in the, um, in the sources. There were also movies, uh, tons of YouTube videos, articles in magazines, websites, Artern, you know, tons of sources. And the list is growing uh, like a snowball. I keep adding... Uh, there are sources that I might have forgot already because just so many of them I, I'm trying to keep track but it, they just it's just every year the horseback archery exploded in the last you know five ten years and it's just right now it's getting hard to keep track on that stuff and now also I'm uh, spending more time writing than reading so uh, I'm, I'm doing my best, but, you know, uh, it's getting kind of tough. But this is great, really, because there were so little sources when I started. Uh, but now it's getting a lot. And I'm just uh, grateful to be able to be part of this and just, you know, adding my two cents to it. So these are my sources. And... I think we have just one closing video left and, you know, we'll be done. Thank you.